opening module in this series of tutorial videos on the topic of energy swaps. These tutorials are provided by Paradigm. Additional tutorials can be viewed by going to our website, ParadigmTraining.com. Although titled Energy Swaps, the underlying concept at its essence is the financial trading of energy and is more broadly known under various other names. Contract for differences, financial forwards, basis trading, weather trading, forward freight agreements, index calls and puts, heat rate trading, and more. All of these are financial cash settle structures that generally follow the profile and offer the advantages of the examples to follow. Your guide through this tutorial series will be yours truly. My name is Frank. Well, we begin at the beginning of this module by understanding indexation and the risk implications to financial transactions that are indexed. We will see why the resulting index determined cash flow is, to a trader, effectively the same as physical energy. We'll see how buying and selling swaps is simply trading energy in financial form. This financial index cash flow is key to enabling us to use the swap to hedge price risk in the purchase or sale of energy. Financial trading revolves largely around the concept of trading something called index. The index price refers to a posted or published price provided by an independent source, that is, not anyone directly engaged in the trading of the commodity. This allows a price to be accepted by market participants as a fair representation of the current value of the spot price. Spot most often refers to the price for prompt month delivery, but can also refer to other periods such as daily. The index price will, will be multiplied by some specified energy volume to arrive at an amount of index cash flow that will be paid or received in settling a transaction. The posted index can be specified using any of several methods. One of the most acceptable methods is to use the closing price of an energy futures contract on a specified date, most commonly being the last trading day before delivery month. This is in many ways ideal as it is a transparent form of price discovery, clearly capturing the market clearing price. For pricing where there is no futures market, index can be determined by a survey among major dealers and marketers. They report their trades and prices and using some type of weighted method, a market index price is calculated. This approach relies heavily on honest and accurate reporting by the surveyed parties. And while generally this has been the case, there have been some scandals for attempts by traders to manipulate indices through false reports. Another approach is to rely on the price posted by operators of power grid systems such as independent system operators, ISOs, or regional transmission operators, RTOs. These prices are often set based on results of clearing prices at auction. Energy supply contracts are common in which a fixed price is not specified. Rather, the pricing will be determined by the future market index. For example, a gas burner enters into a firm supply contract with a producer who will deliver 300,000 MMBTU per month for the months November through March. Against these deliveries, the burner will pay the natural gas index price for the respective month and location as published on the first of the delivery month by the publication Inside FERC. So for the settlement for November delivery, the burner will pay November index multiplied by 300,000. For December delivery, burner pays the December index multiplied by 300,000, and so on and so forth. Supply contracts priced at index like the one we just looked at are very common in the U.S. gas market. Here we see that 70% of total U.S. natural gas supply is contracted at index pricing. With another 22% contracted at fixed prices, it leaves only 8% of supply left for spot trading. Does this mean that 70% of gas buyers have chosen not to hedge by fixing the gas price? The answer is no. A very significant portion of those 70% will hedge themselves, but they will use financially settled hedge instruments, the likes of which we will talk about in this section. Notice here that the index price will be based on trades that occur in the spot market which comprises only 8% of the market. The prices that result from this small 8% percent 
Trading volume determines the pricing for the vast majority of gas supply in the U.S. But now, let's examine the price risk dimensions of index cash flow and gas supply. We have a dealer who will receive physical and natural gas in his forward book. For the same period and volume, our dealer will pay the natural gas index cash flow. The question is, what is a dealer's overall price risk position? Looking at these flows separately, receiving physical gas is a long position. Dealer benefits from rising prices. On the other side, paying gas index cash flow is a short position. Dealer benefits from falling prices. Being both long and short, the dealer is neutral to price risk. An index supply contract has the same flows. Dealer will receive physical gas and pay gas index cash flow. What is a dealer's net risk position here? Well, taking delivery of gas is a long position. Paying gas index, as before, is a short position. So again, the overall position is neutral. Now here's where a common question emerges. If prices rise, doesn't the dealer's cost of gas rise, and so wouldn't that make him short? The key here is to realize that the dealer does not consume the gas. If prices rise, he can sell that gas at the higher price. No loss results. He is not at risk to prices. But this changes if the buyer consumes the gas, say in his factory operations. As a gas burner, the buyer is inherently short. Higher prices hurt this buyer. However, even before entering into the supply contract, being a gas consumer, he is already short. The index supply contract doesn't change that. The burner is still short. That's because the purchase of gas at index by itself is a risk neutral position. So what is the motive for buying at index? The burner is not mitigating price risk, he is mitigating his physical supply risk with this firm delivery contract. The cornerstone of understanding financial trading is to grasp the following concept. As a price risk manager, a trader is indifferent between physical energy and energy index cash flow. They are the same, as they give him the same price risk position. Or viewed differently, physical gas can always be converted into gas index cash flow. If given physical gas, the dealer can sell it. He will earn the market price and therefore can offset the index cash flow payment. Likewise, if given gas index cash flow, that is the exact amount of money required to buy physical gas. Because of this assumed interchangeability, Gas index cash flow can be considered simply as gas in financial form. We are going to trade financial gas. Consider a consumer of gas entering into a firm physical natural gas supply contract priced at $5 on $30,000 a day for 12 months. By doing so, the user has mitigated not one but two risks. One, the fixed price Supply is a long position that offsets the user's natural short position. User has mitigated price risk. And two, the firm's supply commitment mitigates his physical delivery risk. So commingled in this contract are both price risk protection and physical supply risk protection. The user is mitigating price risk. Its natural short position is offset by the fixed price contract's long position. This payout diagram plots the profit or loss of a risk position at varying market prices. The payout from this long position would be a symmetrical upward sloping line with a break even at $5, the contract price. If prices rise to six, user earns $1. If prices fall to four, user loses $1. Let's modify the supply contract slightly. Instead of receiving physical gas, the user will now receive the natural gas index cash flow. This now is a swap. The swap also creates a long position for the user. But what would this payout of this long swap look like? 
Here you might want to pause the video and mentally try to anticipate what this payout should look like. If the index is set at $5, the position breaks even. So the long position will have an upward slope with the intersection at $5. If index is set at $6, the user receives 6 and pays 5 netting a $1 profit. If index is set at 4 the user receives 4 and pays 5 netting a $1 loss. Look familiar? It should. It is the exact same long position payout as the $5 supply contract. This is just to reinforce the point. A trader would be indifferent between index cash flow and physical because they both give the trader the same risk position. In other words, this swap has the same risk profile as the physical supply contract. For this reason, we can think of natural gas index cash flow as natural gas in financial form, or simply financial gas. Buying and selling gas index is, from a price perspective, the same as buying and selling physical gas. They both produce the same risk and therefore the same rewards. Like the supply contract, this swap provides the user a long position to offset its natural short position, but unlike the supply contract, it does not manage supply risk. To do that, we add our friend the index supply contract. Pay gas index, receive physical gas. This index supply contract, we previously established, is neutral to price and so offers no price protection. What it does offer is supply risk mitigation. See that now, no matter what the index is set at, the user will always on net pay $5 for its gas. For whatever he pays for this gas, he receives the same amount on the swap. Taken together, these two transactions create a synthetic fixed price contract. The swap has hedged a variable price position, that is index supply, changing it to fixed price supply. So in summary, we've seen that an energy price index is a fair representation of the market price of a commodity that is widely accepted among market participants. Cash flow amounts are calculated from index prices and these cash flows will have risk profiles virtually identical to physical energy. So index cash flow can be bought and sold just like and right alongside of physical trades. In fact, trading index cash flow is trading energy only in financial form. In the upcoming modules, we will address the question, why use two transactions, a swap as well as an index supply contract, to create fixed price supply when that can be achieved with a single supply contract? One critical aspect of this discussion will be the advantage swaps provide in separating the, the management of physical versus financial risks. From a slightly different perspective, we will explore how swaps can be used to reverse engineer bundled risks. The box and arrow diagrams are the language of the trading business. We'll show how these are created and used in deal and hedge structuring. We will also see how these diagrams allow us to calculate the final cost to revenue from simple to complex derivative hedge structures. Paradigm offers training programs on a wide array of topics. All of them address the unique challenges of managing risk in the energy sector. We invite you to our website to view more modules and to get further information about Paradigm's tutorials and classroom training programs.